The oldest Vikian myths tell the story of ancient benevolent beings who descended among the Vikian people eons ago. The Vikians received fire from them as well as information about the origins of life on their home world, the moon Vikia. The ancient tales go this way. It all began with a boom. There was a world that didn't orbit any suns. It really was lost in space as it wandered among the stars. The ethereal kiss between this rogue world and the former home of all life forms of Vikia has decided the fate of your place in this paradise, for we have chosen to save life from annihilation. Over the millennia, in their poetry, the Vikians have referred to these two mythical colliding planets as Valkyrian, the goddess of life, and Vokner, the god of despair, destruction and chaos. The mythological beings also gave the Vikians a warning to pass on to future generations. They told them that their moon was doomed and that they would return one day to see their progress and achievements. To make sure the Vikians remember them, they carved a colossal geoglyph depicting one of them on Lunik, the second largest moon of the gas dwarf Vek. Despite their statement, they never returned. As knowledge and technology developed over the ages, and in accordance with ancient tales, the Vikians discovered that their son Vexal, a type A star, was about to rapidly transform into a red giant. With no evidence of the return of the benevolent enigmatic spacefarers, Vikian society chose to take its fate into its own hands. The Vikians turned their society upside down, and concentrated all their resources, blood, and sweat, to find other suitable planets to colonize, for their time on Vikia, the life-bearing moon, was about to expire. Having a diverse portfolio of investments was the goal. With overwhelming success, the Vikians found three potential planets, separated by light years, and empty of pre-existing life. They could host Vikia's life forms for the next few hundred of million years. But now they must properly catalog and register the species of each biome before they can be loaded onto the arcs that are about to commence their journey towards the three new worlds. And that's what this series will cover. Each episode will feature a specific biome, highlighting its flora and fauna. As a whole, this series will provide a glimpse of the current life forms on Vikia prior to the moon's imminent demise. So, let's start this series with a tour of the Vexal system. It is located somewhere in the vast unknown of space, and is found in a remote corner of a spiral galaxy. Vexal is an A-type star. The type of stars O, B, and A have shorter lifetimes than the other remaining star types, which makes them less favorable for the evolution of life. Vexal has a mass of 1.9 suns and a luminosity of 16. It is currently at the end of its life as a blue star. Nine planets are in the orbit of Vexal. Their names are, Hel, Aesir, Vek, Styerna, Vanir, Jotunheim, Stormheim, Niflheim, and Nod. Only Vek and its moons are in the Goldilocks. The planet Hel is a molten world. Due to its tight orbit around Vexal, the planet is incredibly hot. At its equator, lava flows continuously. The planet Aesir is a barren world whose surface is covered by a heavy layer of dust and ash. This is truly a desolate place. Vek is a gas dwarf of blue color. One of its moons, Vikia, is fascinating since it is a paradise world. Vikia has harbored life brought by ancient aliens and it serves as a nature reserve. Over the eons, a sentient species has emerged from the beasts. The planet Styerna is a world of carbon. Its crust is made of pink diamond. It shines like a pink star in the sky. The planet Vanir is a barren and cold world. It is distinguished by its colorful rings. Jotunheim is colossal and is the most massive planet of the Vex solar system. It has a tumultuous striped atmosphere that has a rich chocolate hue. 
another gas giant is Stormheim. However, it has a creamier hue. The planet has the strongest storms, and the fastest winds in the Vex solar system. The planet Niflheim is a lesser gas giant. It lacks texture, but it has stunning white rings. The last planet is not. It is a small frozen world that is covered with ice and rocks. And that concludes this project's introduction. You are now invited to a journey that will certainly last a few years before it ends. As mentioned before, each episode will focus on a particular biome and will present its respective flora and fauna. So far, all species from this world derive from five main body plants: the Photophytes, the Quadrivalidae, the Vermidae, the Bestialidae, and the Vertebrae. Introducing species of Vicia.